In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, rational expressions, and we're going to learn how to simplify these rational expressions. You've already actually worked with rational expressions before in your life. A rational expression is just a fraction um, with an expression in it. And an expression can be as simple as, as a number. Like, for example, here I have a rational expression, a fraction with the expression in the numerator is 10, and the expression in the denominator is 12. Um, so you've already worked with these rational expressions plenty of times. However, now when we start to get into algebra, we're going to start to work with expressions that also have variables in them. And so here's kind of our level one rational expression, just has numbers. And then our level two, we kind of throw in some variables. But notice kind of at level two, we still have just one term in both the numerator and denominator. And so then finally, when we kind of move to the level three uh, rational expression, now we're going to have more than one term in the numerator and denominator, and we end up having polynomials in both the numerator and denominator. So the technique that I'm going to show you here will work for all three levels of these rational expressions when we go to simplify them, and also later on when we go to multiply, divide, and then finally add and subtract. All of this technique will kind of carry over to all of those uh, situations with rational expressions. Okay, so let's take a look. What I'm going to have you do is first factor everything out. So when I'm looking with just numbers, I need to factor the numerator of 10 and the denominator of 12. And by factor, I mean we need to get 10 down to its prime factorization. So I'm going to use a factor tree here, and what I'm thinking is what two numbers would multiply together to give me 10? Well, 2 and 5. I can choose 10 and 1, but that's not going to help us break this down or factor this number. Now notice 2 here is a prime number. There's no other numbers that divide into 2. 5 is also a prime number. So when I factor 10, I end up with this prime factorization of 2 times 5. And so that's what I'm going to write here in the numerator of my fraction. I'll write 10 as 2 times 5. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 12. So I'm going to factor 12. Uh, I'm thinking 3 times 4. 3 is a prime number, however 4 isn't. So I'll go ahead and factor 4 again. It's 2 times 2. So if I take the bottom of this tree branch here, 3 times 2 times 2, that is the prime factorization of 12. Okay, erase that, factor tree. Okay, once I get the things factored now, all I'm going to do is divide out the common factors. So notice when I look at a numerator and denominator, I see that they both have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to divide that 2 out. So one thing that I want to do, I'm going to cross both those 2's out, but also since I'm dividing the 2 out, I'm actually going to have a 1 left over and a 1 left over. If I divide the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same number, I'm not going to change the value of that fraction. I'm just going to kind of change the way it looks, or in fact simplify it now. So I've divided out the 2's. In the numerator, I'm left with just 5. In the denominator, I have 3 times 1 times 2. Well, I can think of that as just 3 times 2, or 6. So when I simplify 10 12ths, I end up with a fraction 5 6 And so that answer should be kind of familiar to you. This new factoring way may be a little new, but you want to learn this factoring way because that's going to carry over when we look at these other rational expressions to simplify them. Okay, let's take a look at level two. So I'm going to go through and factor all of these things out. So with 24, I'm thinking uh, 6 times 4. Well, 6 isn't prime, so I'm going to write 6 as 2 times 3. And remember, 6 times 4, 4 is also not prime. So I'm going to write 4 as 2 times 2. Okay, I have x squared up here, which really just means x times x. So I'm going to write that out. Okay. Same thing with the denominator now. Uh, 36, I'm thinking 6 times 6. Well, here's 6, 2 times 3. And then I need another 6, 2 times 3. So I factored 36, and now I have three of these x factors. Uh, x to the third power means I have three of these. Okay. So I've got it all factored out. Now I'm going to look to divide out common factors in the numerator and denominator. Uh, common factor of 2, common factor of 3, common factor of 2. And now if I look at these x, x's here, I have two common factors of x. So I'm going to divide those out. Okay. Let's take a look at what we have left here. So in the numerator, I just have 2. And in the denominator, I have 3 times x, or just 3x. And so I have simplified now this rational expression, this kind of level 2 rational expression, doing exactly the same thing. Factor everything out, divide out the common factors. Okay, so now I'm going to take these same ideas I did with the level 1 and level 2 and now kind of extend it to this level 3 uh, rational expression. And kind of at the level 3 rational expression, now we have 
more than one term. So notice I have two terms in the top, three terms in the bottom. So we have to kind of shift gears when we have more than one term. Now our factoring, we want to use our techniques that we use when we factor polynomials. So I'm thinking greatest common factor, uh, factoring a trinomial into two binomials. So I can no longer look at the terms individually like I did here because I had just one term, so I just factored that term out. I want to kind of look at these at this level three, the whole expression at one time. So here I'm not going to try to factor this x to the fourth into four x's. I'm going to think, okay, look at the whole expression and factor what I can there. So I do have a greatest common factor in both of these terms, so I'm going to factor that out from. So here I have x to the fourth, here I have x to the third, so the greatest common factor in each of those is going to be x to the third. So I'm factoring that out front. When I factor x to the third out of x to the fourth, I have one x left. When I factor x to the third out of this last term, I'll have negative 10. Now when I go down to the denominator, I have three terms. So I want to think, again, kind of looking all at this whole expression in one time. So I have a trinomial there, so I'm going to try to factor it into two binomials. So let's see here. Uh, x squared, I need an x and an x. Last term is positive. That tells me I either need to have both negative or both positive. Well, since the middle is negative, I'm going to go negative, negative. And now I'm thinking 70, uh, 35 times 2, 10 times 7. Um, notice I have an x minus 10 up here. So that kind of leads me to believe that something might divide out to simplify here. So I'm going to try 7 and 10 first. It's kind of helping me out, giving me a clue maybe how to factor this. Let's see if that works. Well, negative 7 times negative 10 will give me the positive 70. And if I look at the outsides, that would be negative 10x when I multiply those together. Insides, negative 7x. That would give me a, a negative 17x. So that is the correct factoring. And so just like I did before at this level 1 and level 2 now, I factored the numerator and denominator. And now I'm just going to look to divide out any common factors. And I do have a greatest uh, a common factor there. And that common factor is x minus 10. So I'm going to divide out that common factor of x minus 10. And I will be left with x to the third over x minus 7. And I'm going to leave the parentheses on that x minus 7 because when we shift gears and go to these polynomials and we have more than one term, we have to look at these factors. It's that whole thing. I can't look at this as a factor of x and then a factor of negative 7. I need to look at that whole expression there as one factor. Because notice what the word factor means is things that are being multiplied together. And I only have one thing here that's being multiplied, in case it's not being multiplied by anything, but I have one factor there. In the top, I have three factors. I have x times x times x. But there is no factor of just x in the denominator. So that's as simple as I can get that rational expression. Okay? So you learn math by doing it. And so what I've written here for you is a couple practice problems. So you should pause your video player and work both of these practice problems. And when you get done working those practice problems, hit uh, play on your video player, and then you can watch me go through them and see how you did. Okay, So let's take a look at this first one. I have a rational expression here. We're going to simplify this rational expression. So the first thing we need to do is factor the numerator and denominator. So notice I just have one term in both the numerator and denominator, so I can go and just split these things up or factor these things up as they stand kind of look at them individually. So I would factor the 6, which would be 2 times 3. I'd factor the y to the third, which means I have 3 of those y's. Okay. In the denominator, I have factor 10, which is 2 times 5, and then times y. Okay. I've got both numerator and denominator factored, so now I'll divide out the common factors. Divide out a common factor of 2, and I'll divide out a common factor of y. And let's see what's left. In the numerator, I have 3 and then y times y, which would give me y squared. And in the denominator, I just have 5. Okay, Let's take a look at, at the practice problem 2. Notice here I'm shifting gears. I have a polynomial. I have more than one term here. So I have uh, three terms in the top, three terms in the bottom. So I want to think about factoring these, each of these, these trinomials into two binomials. So I know I need two binomials there. In the top, notice I'm going to need a 2x and an x. That last term is negative. That tells me I need a positive and a negative for my signs. I might need to switch these, but I'll try a positive and negative like that. And so now uh, I need to get 4 in the end. So I can either choose uh, 4 and 1, or I could use 2 and 2. I'm trying to get a middle term of 7. So I think I am going to use 4 and 1 there. Um, so 1 here. 
4 there. Notice when I take a look now, outsides would give me a negative 8x, insides would give me positive 1x, that would give me a negative 7x. I want a positive 7x, so I'll switch those signs. Now outsides give me negative 8x, insides, uh, sorry, positive 8x, insides give me negative 1x, that gives me the positive 7x, so I factor the top. Now I'll go to factor the denominator, uh, I'll need an x and an x. Again, last term is negative, that tells me I need plus minus. Uh, 4 with a difference of 3, so I'm probably going to choose 4 and 1 where the 4 is positive and 1 is negative. Now if I take outsides, I would get negative 1x insides, positive 4x, that would give me the positive 3x. Okay, so I factor the denominator. Now I'm looking for common factors, and I do have a common factor of x plus 4. So I'm going to divide that out, and so my final answer would be 2x minus 1 over x minus 1. And we don't need the parentheses on there, but I think when we're starting out, it's nice to leave those parentheses because you'll think then of these as just one factor because we have this whole factor here, 2x minus 1 and then x minus 1. I don't want to try to divide this x out with that x out. That would give us an incorrect solution. Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful. Now you can go and simplify some rational expressions.